This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we're going to play some old classic Grixis Control. And I'm going to tell you how this deck came about. It came about because I wanted to play with Finale of Promise, and I was building Is It Arclight Phoenix decks, and there just weren't enough sorceries for Finale of Promise to bring back. There were very, very few. And it was actually making the card significantly weaker than it's been in the past. So I went looking for a third color for some other sorceries that the Finale could flash back. And that led me to black where there was Thought Erasure. And then that led me to eventually cutting the Arclight Phoenix and making a Grixis control list built around flashing back Finale uh, or casting Finale of Promise for as large for large amounts of value, and then later in the game for just 10, which is something I've never done in Magic Arena. But when you cast Finale of Promise for 10 or more, you get to copy each of the spells you flash back twice. So the goal of this deck is to control the board, stall the game, get to a late game, use Finale of Promise, and flash back cards like Enter the God Eternals and commence the end game twice, amassing into a giant zombie creature, and also drawing a ton of cards, gaining a ton of life, and if you flash back something like Duress, then you can take away the removal for that zombie creature so it just wins the game. And it turned out to be a really fun deck. I had a really fun stream playing with it, and I wanted to make a video showcasing the deck. So um, Thought Erasure was in the deck. It's been replaced with Duress because we're going to run this in the standard shakeup event, where the only card banned from the whole deck was Thought Erasure. So if you run this card in standard, check out the description. I put in my recommendations for what to cut to add Thought Erasure back to the deck because it should certainly be there. It's great in this deck. It's great with Finale, both for filling the graveyard with the Surveil and for flashing back and taking their best card. And uh, so remember to put Thought Erasure in the deck if you take this to ladder as the standard shakeup event will be over by the time you watch this. You might be looking at this deck thinking, CGB, you need more win cons. Look, look, if you're saying that, you haven't watched my videos long enough, that's for sure. If I play an old school grindy control deck, which this is designed to be, I don't need no win cons. If I have something with a power and toughness, like one of it somewhere in my deck, or something that mills the opponent ever so slightly, I have my win cons. This has plenty of win cons. We win with God Eternal Kefnet, Amassed Creatures, or Sheer Annoyance. We also have one Fae of Wishes, which lets us go to the Granted Wish board, where we do have a Jace, Wielder of Mys Mysteries, to make decking ourselves the win con. A Nicole Bolas, that can torture somebody to death. Ugin, that can make a 2-2, that can kill people. Mass Manipulation, I'll kill them with their own things. Uh, explosion, I'll burn their face. Like, I have a million win cons. Okay, just a couple, but you get the idea. Um, this wish board is all about little individual spells because anything you fetch with the Fae, you can also later use again with Finale, which makes it a little bit of a more low-powered wish board on the surface, but more utility in the long run. Taste of Death is a fun one that lets Grixis gain life, whereas usually Grixis has trouble gaining life outside of Enter the God Eternals, so that's a fun one. It also gets around Hexproof. Okay, I've introduced the deck. Let's dive in and let the Grixis Finale of Promise nonsense begin. We are facing Crumping. Crum ping. Crew mm ping ping. Mm. Yeah, hard to find other ways to say that. They're already flashing me the hello as I think about my hand, but this hand is pretty good. It has an early removal spell some card selection. You don't like to see either of these cards in the opener, really, but Fae of Wishes is flexible enough. We'll give it a try. Oh, okay, we're gonna be like this. We're gonna be this guy. All right. Well, we want the blue one. Now any basic off the top lets us play the Fae of Wishes without paying life. Oh, yay. They're the deck with, that is on the play with the triple one drop. Basically the best of one nightmare. Okay. So next turn, you will play the Lovestruck Beast. This will be a 2-2. Two, two. We'll have Flame Sweep. Flame Sweep will be glorious. But will we have Flame Sweep, actually? We won't if we don't draw another land. Which means maybe the Fae of Wishes is the wrong play. 
Let's try opt and see if we find another land. If we don't, we might want to play the Fabled Passage and fetch since this will enter the battlefield tapped if it's our third land. Sorry, Kefnet. Maybe later. All right, so we play Fable Passage Sago because we want to ensure that we get to Flame Sweep next turn. And Yorvo is the play. That's better than the Lovestruck Beast. That's kind of sad for us. We really wanted the Lovestruck Beast to be the play there. All right. So what do we want? Double red sets up the Flame Sweep. We already have double black and double blue, so we'll get the red. Or not the Flame Sweep, but the Finale of Promise, I should say. Okay, a land that doesn't cost us life. That is nice to see. We're definitely in a tough spot. The opponent will probably also play a Love Struck Beast. Oh yeah, more things. Uh, okay, so with this trigger on the stack is when we want to cast the Flame Sweep to kill the Pelt Collector. Now, unfortunately, the opponent can sacrifice the Lovestruck Beast to the Yorvo, and then they just need a land to win the game, but we can play a Fae of Wishes to block. So, sack a thingy. We go to five, we play Fae of Wishes. Next turn we have Finale of Promise. It can get us... What are we looking at? We're looking for Optin Rampage, so we need the opponent not to play a creature. That doesn't seem very likely. That doesn't seem likely to me, but they didn't. Oh no, what do they have? Is it? Does it give trample, my precious? Oh no, draw cards. Oh God, they just reset their whole hand. This is such a beating. Bedevil is okay. We don't have to finale this turn if we bedevil, but either way, it takes our whole turn. I think we're better off with finale trying to hit a land drop. So we get to use the opt as well. And then we're probably dead to a Ceratops, to be honest, but I don't see how we could have done much different. All right, let's see what it happens. Is it the Ceratops? Enter the God Eternals is, would be the best draw our deck could produce right now to help get us back out of this situation, whatever creatures the opponent decides to make. Beastie. Okay. Okay. And another? Yes. <sighs> that is not it. We could try to hit a Cry of the Canarium, which I think is now our best chance. This is five damage, right? Yeah. This is five. All right, let's give it a shot. That won't do. I guess I'll have a look at their hand, see how dead I was. The hinge, pretty good snag. But that's going to do it for us. We couldn't compete. That Return of the Wild Speaker was an absolute drubbing, and I hate them for it. But that ritual was so, was so close. Ah, ah. That was a stupid game. Dukin. A Dukin. The Dukin. Even looks like Soren's doing the Hadouken. All right. This hand is nice. Let's do it. Our opponent opens on a mountain. My bile duct has an instant reflex. I pick on mono red because everybody has a trigger. People seem to get really hung up on that. Chandra's regulator, oh boy. Well, I got something for your regulator. Regulate this. Yeah. Banner. Whoa. Okay. I mean, if you're going to ramp, that's a good way to do it. Let's just keep removing this stuff. 
just kill it all because eventually we have finale to bring back the bedevil and the rampage so i'm guessing we'll see a chandra or a bag of holding we can remove that too Ooh, that's a good draw all right um yeah fire away let's just say chandra tribal i came prepared the opponent draws and exiles what? Chandra's Triumph, sure. They do get it back if they sacrifice the bag. Oh, look at all the removal. Well, what can Lava Coil hit? I guess it can hit like an Enter the God Eternals thing while Shock has the potential to go face. So we're dealing with really real corner case stuff here. I'm going to take the Coil. It just does more. Or more damage, I'd say. And my Enter the God Eternals 4-4s four can be good for pressuring Chandra's. Let's just use this now. What do we need? Another black is fine. Or another blue lets me both opt and... Um, yeah. We get another blue. It lets me opt in and anticipate this turn. And then we have a really nice finale set up. Enter the God Eternals. Don't need that right now. More duress. Drown in the lock is great. I was going to say that would be nice. And more ways to remove planeswalkers and more finales. That's that's what's on my mind. I think a Castle Vantress is a good take to just help us set up our future. Alright. So I can finale. And with that finale, I could dress the opponent. I could also anticipate an Angras Rampage their bag. I think at getting rid of the bag of holdings is a pretty good move. We do tap out. Our opponent gets to play something. So they get like one turn to land a Chandra and make my life miserable. They probably will though. I think I wait. I wait till my finale can nail both. Which means I should have played the Castle of Antris this turn instead of the island. But oh well. They didn't use the bag. I would definitely use the bag holding a shock. They have something they want to play. But Grixis, Grixis in a staring match, you usually want Grixis. Wow. Huh. Another regulator. Let's not. Regulator's pretty good. Let's them get through their deck pretty well. There's the duress. There's something they're hiding from me. But as long as they have bag, I can duress, they can activate bag and put it there in response. I guess if they do that, I can finale the bag. All right, let's go for it. Finale the bag. When did you think you would hear me say something like that in a video? Okay, I don't know what they're hanging on to these cards for. Not great or anything. And now they're just leaving up four mana in case I can remove this, I guess. Which, it's just a bunch of removal spells that don't affect me. One of the great things about being a Grixis deck in this style, it's like really don't care about removal spells. The more you have in your deck, the better my deck is against yours. Tybalt. I'll just say no. Easy counter, easy life. Still Chandra tribal deck without Chandra right now. I'm sure the opponent will draw her eventually. And the opponent is on three mana, so we can get rid of the bag right now, so why not? Let's figure out exactly what we're bringing back. We could duress the triumph, but I don't really care about it. We want to kill the bag, so we have Bedevil or Rampage to do it. I think we'll use Rampage and Anticipate. I think that's the best we can do. Behold, the finale of promise. The value. Sacrifice an artifact. Anticipate. All right, they do switch the triumph with something. So this is their opportunity to draw something good. We'll take the opt. 
crack the whip, get that out of here, and pass the turn. And we'll see what the opponent found. It is Chandra time. And it's probably the best Chandra they could want, the one that gets card advantage. Castle Embreath. So they do have some non-mountain lands to use. Passage to the bottom, draw. If we had another Drown in the lock, I should have opted before this resolved, but I don't. So we can get back Bedevil and duress the opponent. And now you behold the finale of Promise in Grixis, which you've probably only ever seen it used in Arclight Phoenix. This is some pretty, pretty nasty stuff, getting to flash back all these removal spells. Hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. However, we do have this problem. Top decks. We've completely nullified our opponent, taken everything from them, but they can still draw the right cards. And if we don't draw the right cards, they will still beat us. That is not the right cards. That's pretty good. And they've got the castle. It can deal more damage faster with Chandra. Do we hold this to make a bigger endgame? I suppose... Let's, let's look at this graveyard. So if they draw Chandra's Triumph, it doesn't matter how big this is. Well, at least with my available resources. And holding this... I mean, it's just the difference. I guess the difference is if I play the Commence the Endgame with the castle, the creature doesn't have to die. So I do need to hold this. I could also just play it now rather than ambush. I guess that's smarter. I still get to hit my land drop for the turn, and we know this is the play anyway. And the opponent's probably still going to use the Chandra to attack. If they minus the Chandra to bring back the Triumph to take this out, I'm pretty happy with that. And then here's a Dispersal. That can take out the Chandra. So we'll play this tap land for the turn and say go. And they are going to minus for the Triumph. But I didn't take any damage that turn. Remember this one? No problem. Fire can't solve. And they hold the card. Well, that makes it hard for Dispersal to work. But we drew another Finale. So the instant we want now is Commence. What is the sorcery? Duress? Hmm. We could Dispersal now, and then if we have nine mana next turn Finale, could get it back. Hmm. If we have nine mana, we could Finale back Dispersal and possibly catch the opponent without a card to protect their Chandra. And we do have it. Yeah. Let's set it up for next turn. Plus we might be able to scry a Bedevil or an Angrath's Rampage to the top of our deck. Do we know anything on the bottom? Yeah, we actually know a lot on the bottom. We don't want to shuffle that until we absolutely have to. So we're not going to sacrifice this passage until we 100% need the mana. Because that would shuffle all this land back into the deck. Here they come. Oh, and it still has this card in our hand, so we can't dispersal the Chandra yet. No pumps. Okay, they've got something they're going to play. It's Sarkhan. Okay. Okay, then. Sarkhan will make a dragon. And Drown in the Lock can kill the dragon. Let's use the Dispersal here. That will at least make Sarkin go away. Here's the Dragon. And I suppose we do get the Scries here, so we will sacrifice this. Feels bad. There's a Rampage. It's a good draw.
So with combined with Finale, we can Rampage, take out the Chandra, Rampage, take out the Dragon, and the instant will be Commence. Can it be Commence? One, two, three, four, five, six, yes. So target player sacrifices a Planeswalker. Cast Finale for six. Get Commence. It's a baby Commence. It's not the greatest Commence ever, but it's something. Get this. Play this. Target player sacrifices a creature. Commence the end game. Two cards make a 2-2. Two -two. Those are a nice pair of cards to draw. Another Sarkin off the top. But that's going to line up better than our opponent wants it to, for sure. Enter the God Eternals makes you a 6-6. Six, six. And we'll just take out the Sarkin and focus on card advantage here rather than going face. And that went well. That was a... And that is the game. Adukin! See Moose 27. They've seen 27 Meese. Meese? Moose. Mooses? Weird hand. Very slow. On the draw. A duress we don't cast till the second turn. Sounds great. Why wouldn't I keep that? Can't think of a single reason. Part of the joy of these unranked, like, kind of silly cues is I just can keep my hand no matter what. And I can always make up reasons to keep something, so... Yeah. <laughs> I I wouldn't keep it in a competitive situation, but we can see where this goes. Our opponent says it's a Temple of Milady. I have a Temple of Epiphany. I bought him the Enter the God Eternals because I don't know quite what I'm dealing with. And it's a turn two Incubation Druid. I think I'll go get a Black Source and duress this person before Liliana Dreadhorde General gets cast on me. Second Incubation Druid. Oh, it would be nice to draw that Cry of the Canarium. Do the Black Mana. Some of these top decks. Would be so nice. Flame Sweep. Cry of the Canarium. Ritual of Soot. Whenever somebody is this reliant on mana creatures to produce their mana, I start salivating at, at the thought of a board sweeper. <laughs> opt. We can opt. So we can play tap steam vents, opt after we see what our opponent does in dress. The other option is to play out a Fae of Wishes, which I don't think we need. But let's get some information. It's time for that info. Whoa! Opponent's not doing much. I'll take the murder. It's unconditional. But yeah, their hand is not going to line up well against our Grixis ways. They can pump up their Incubation Druid. That might be a pain. Especially if they just hold it open. Or enter the God Eternals is like... If I target it, they turn it into a 3-5. Oh! Oh, you top decked that. Must be nice. Ugh. Okay. And this creature dies. So I think we can avoid that with the cry, but we don't have the right mana. Oof. Big oof this game. Big, big oof. Let's see what's in the board here. Noxious Grasp can remove the Garrick after he makes a few more 2-2s. Two the Elder Spell is currently uncastable. The Devil is currently uncastable. There's no Spyglass in this sideboard. All right, we're gonna be taking a beating, so we're gonna to need to draw perfectly to get out of this because we're going to be under a ton of pressure from this turn on. Mm. 
Yeah, at least they adapted the wrong one. <laughs> that That's going to save me three damage. <laughs> I got it. I'll take it where I can find it. We are the apex okay, we have a cry of the canarium here. And we can play the Fey of Wishes to block the Druid. Then the opponent makes two more wolves. Then we kill their Garrick. They could also minus Garrick to kill the Fey, but then they don't have the wolves. This is interesting. It's certainly tempting to immediately snap off the Noxious Grasp, and but then we take 10 freaking damage, which I don't think is reasonable. So here's the cry. The opponent is going to disfigure their own wolf. Oh. Which lets them ultimate their Garrick. But they only have one creature. Alright. If they ultimate their Garrick, we can Noxious Grasp the Druid. So it's not that great. Okay, they're going to kill the Fae. Interesting. And they know about the grasp. All right, this is going to get really funky. Can I draw land? Yes. Grasp on the Garrick. Instant and sorcery is duress. So we get the grasp and the duress. Finale. Grasp away the druid, duress the hand. What do you got? Up to 13, murder is gone. Our opponent's on top deck mode. We have two commenci end games. I think we, okay, they're gonna keep it tough. They're gonna keep it tough. They've got a card advantage source. Braska doesn't do too much here. It's not the most dangerous thing. We could make a slightly larger creature by commencing now, but then it can be killed by Vraska, so that's not acceptable. So we'll say go. We also need to keep hitting land drops. I don't hold the land there just to have a bigger creature. Now with Enter the God Eternals in hand. Our opponent's going to keep the Vraska work. Cavalier of Thorns. Ugh. Right, this they're not going away. So much removal and ramp. It's an interesting deck. Start making giant amass zombie creature. Drown in the lock. One has a juicy sized graveyard. They're gonna get back Garrick, right? We kill this. What does Garrick do? So much. So here's what I think we. Again, though, if we don't go through this, our opponent's going to minus this Frasca and kill our token anyway. Maybe we're fine with that. It is an interesting spot. I think this is the play. We're going to attack the Vraska. If the opponent blocks, we can take it, we can commence here and still have the drown open for whatever they get back. We're going to lose our token. We'll counter whatever they get back. The other option is to use enter the god eternals and still have drown open. And enter the god eternals can mill, but it doesn't mill after the cavalier. So maybe I should have entered the God Eternals before. No, that wouldn't do it either. It's a very weird spot. I think we'll go with the Enter the God Eternals. This is fine, I think. So Cavalier gets back what? I, I said Garrick is most likely. I still think that's true. Yep. Yeah. 
And we're going to lose our zombie army to the Vraska. But at least this way, like, I don't know. We still have another one on backup here. Oh, bold. The opponent's assuming that Garrick will resolve to take out the army. Or they're just trying to get this to ultimate. All right, drown you in the lock. And the last card is an Incubation Druid that we need to move out of the way. Let's start with an Anticipate. Try to find a removal spell. Ritual Soot and Drown in the Lock. So Drown in the Lock will do. Destroy the Druid. And attack the Vraska so it can't ultimate. We'll keep making land drops. We do have finale for 10 as part of our end game. So land drops matter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's pain. Miss Vraska has kept the opponent in it. And now they have a murder as well. They refuse to go away. So I know I want to commence this turn. But let's save it because the opponent can mine us and use the Vraska on it. Let's keep hitting the land drop, though. I think it's worth it. Oh, no. They have a castle now, too. It just doesn't stop. You know, there was a time where, like, blue and black were the only colors, and in combination, I would add, that were good at grinding. Or maybe you could say blue-white. Nowadays, everybody gets to grind. Everybody gets to grind better with, than blue. Well, the finale is a big draw. So what do we use to kill this thing? Actually, we don't have a way to directly kill this Vraska. All right, we've got to go big then. We've got to hope that our opponent doesn't have a way to interact with this token. So we're going to do commence the end game. No, 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 no. Not what I meant to pick. Commence the end game. Enter the god Eternals. Oh, they're scooping. So how big was that going to be? One, two, and then four. So it was going to be a 10-10 token to take out the Vraska. If the opponent had a murder to kill the token after we did all this, it would be pretty tragic. Kalalak. This hand is pretty good on the play. We have the sweeper, the removal, the finale, the duress. A little bit of something for everything. So what you got? Double drill bit and mono black aggro with a perfect one, two, three curve. Okie dokie. Oh, well, we can't anticipate getting to ritual of soot anything unless we get very lucky. I don't know if there's anything I can do to get the ritual of soot from being drill bit. But we may as well use the Rampage while we can. I guess we give ourselves a chance to draw another Duress. Or we could Finale the Duress. That's an interesting line. To make sure that Ritual Soot happens. Okay, now it's looking actually like the right line. Three mana dress with a shock. And the opponent didn't draw the third drill bit yet. They'll have to wait at least one more turn to totally nuts me off the top. <laughs> it's one of those plays that gets blown out by the really unlikely stuff, but the unlikely stuff seems to happen to me so much I just expect it now. We still don't have an instant. If we had an Opter Anticipate to put in the graveyard, I'd be much happier. Okay. The opponent has decided they're going to use their priest right away to cycle this Lazatap Reaver. They don't want to play the Ayara first? Kind of surprised. <laughs> hey -ya! Now when they reload with Ayara and something else, we'll play the Ritual of Set.
It would have been nice to catch the gutter bones, though. Maybe I should have said go. But I think the opponents... Mm, I don't know. Saying go there, seeing what the opponent can do, or what they wanted to do would be interesting. But now they don't get the gutter bones back until next turn. Because of a Yara. Well, they don't have the mana. So they don't necessarily get gutter bones back yet. Here she comes. There's a little drain and gain. We're going to hold off on the passage. I actually wouldn't mind drawing a little bit more land, although I really want an instant. And let's let Ayara do her thing for a turn. Try to get a better ritual of set. Okay, the Enforcer is pretty good against ritual of set, to be honest. And Gutter Bones. Maybe we're going to bring back Cry of the Carnarium here. Just to exile both of this, these. And we'll see if Ayara attacks. Or if the opponent wants to use her to draw a card. Mm. Going for the value, huh? Okay. Duress. Still not an instant. Very unlikely to hit. Not a good use of mana. Let's go for it. And then let's ritual set. And then we'll bring back Cry after that. Give ourselves another turn or two. Oh! Oh! I was wrong. Hit we did. Hit we did. Oh my goodness. Legendary. I think the right play in that case was to Ritual first, since the Ayara is going to draw a card. Duress would have been more likely to hit. We got pretty lucky to hit anyway. Down to 10. Gutter Bones returns. Priest. Yep, it's a good cry of the Canarium. And we draw a Drown in the Lock. Well, it's an instant. So we can play this, take out the Priest, use Cry next turn, and it can kill. the Drown can kill something that Cry couldn't. I think that's pretty good. We'll do that. The opponent already showed that they really like sacrificing their creatures to use the priest, so we'll take the option away. Oh, oh, that's so good with Cry. But we don't need the Drown. Okay, okay. It's a pretty good top deck. That'll show them. And we still get to hang on to this finale. The opponent does run drill bit. Holding cards in your hand too long might get punished. But we've all, we nailed two of them. Ooh. All right, we're going to mill ourselves to try to put an instant into our graveyard. And we hit an anticipate, making our finale better. But enter the God Eternals. That is the timing you want from your God Eternals. So now what? I think we can wait on this. There's no good active targets right now. Right now we would get an Anticipate and a Sorcery. That would be a Duress. And I think the opponent is holding a land based on what I'm seeing. It's not a removal spell. It's not a creature. And it's not a Duress. It's not a Drill Bit. So it's got to be a land. It's not a Gruesome Menagerie. Here comes a Knight. Easy. I think Angras Rampage is an acceptable answer here. Ooh, commence the end game. But let's just get this out of the way. It can trade with the 4-4 by using the Death Touch pump ability. Smash. Reaver creates two blockers. We definitely have the opponent on the back foot now, though. We could be devil these out of the way. Ooh, actually. Let's go ahead and 
keep the pressure really high. We can be devil remove one. And we can finale remove the other. Let's see, we want the anticipate. I guess we'll use the rampage. So sacrifice a creature, draw. Pretty good. Against these aggro decks, when you reach the mid game and you just start casting as many Enter the God Eternals as the world lets you, you feel pretty good about that card. Now, unfortunately here, we can't... Oh, hold on. No, no, not what I meant to do. I meant to... Mm. So, uh, yeah. Not what I meant to do. But I guess we'll make the trade and force the opponent to do it. Uh, what I meant to do is cast Finale, and I could have Enter the God Eternal and... Or no, Drown in the Lock. Yeah. I drown and lock the Enforcer and then enter the God Eternals, the Leftover, or something like that. So, oops. That's okay. Misclicks happen. Especially when it's cold. It's very cold here. So, I've got the Shivers. I think that has a lot to do with the Misclicks. Okay, the opponent played out their toys. This should be the final breaking point here. So we'll get another commence the endgame, and we'll get a cry of the Canarium. And last game first out, so commence first, cry second. And yeah, this is this is where the Grixis finale deck gets to use its finales to make threats, remove things, and do whatever it wants, and that is the glory of Grixis. I hope you enjoyed this Grixis finale deck. Remember to to add Thought Erasure if you play it on ladder. It's pretty fun. It definitely plays in an old school kind of magic way where you try to grind resources out of your opponent. And magic isn't designed that way anymore. I think that the designers of the game are intentionally trying to make it so that every color can play longer games of Magic and the feels-bads of running out of things to do don't occur, or that games just end quicker. Cards like Hydroid Crisis are good examples of cards that just push the game towards an ending. And powerful cards like Nyssa, of course, uh, are also. Midnight Reaper is a card we saw in that last matchup, where that's also trying to push things in that direction. Planeswalkers in general are designed that way. But this deck is old school. It just tries to play spells that just one for one, remove a thing, remove a thing, remove a thing, gain a little value, gain a little value, gain a little value, and eventually when the opponent blinks and runs out of stuff to do, you take over. And if you still enjoy that style, I think you'll enjoy this deck, so try it out. And thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.